welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are all doing really really well i haven't posted on youtube in a couple of months um as you will have seen from the title this is a story that i feel i have to share and i also feel that i owe it to you guys to share but i've just not had the words or been able to work out what to say to you all so I'm no longer pregnant. Um, I was due the end of October, but obviously I no longer have a bump and I don't have a baby. So my pregnancy was going really, really well up until our 20 week scan. Um, and the 20 week scan is obviously the gender reveal scan. So we were really excited to find out if we was having a little girl or a little boy. And we asked them to write it down so that we could open that up together at home in the in privacy of our own home. Um, and in the scan, they discovered that our son had fluid on his brain. And that then led to a lot more scans. We was, we was then under um, a specialist hospital in London. We're based in Essex, so our care was transferred over there. Um, and they advised us to abort our baby um, because we were still 20 weeks. The cutoff point is 24 weeks. The baby obviously was potentially going to be disabled, but they couldn't really tell us the severity of that. The particular fluid that our son had on his brain would have affected his learning ability. So he'd grown all of his limbs. He potentially would have been able to do all of those normal, normal things but he may have taken a little bit longer, he may have struggled, he may have never done them things, but they obviously couldn't tell us. So we made the decision to continue with the pregnancy and you know, obviously, as you guys know, I'm a Christian woman, I believe in God and I didn't wanna play God. You know, if our baby was meant to come home with us, then our baby would. Whether the baby needed extra care, we would cross that bridge when it got there. So I was going for routine checks, every week or every other week and my placenta then wasn't doing its job so my son was already already struggling with the fluid on his brain and then my with your placenta you have three stages so stage one is healthy normal nothing to worry about stage two your baby is only getting kind of half of what they need and it's obviously a lot harder for them to grow but you can still go full term with this you can still continue um and the baby may just come out small so we was kind of like okay that's fine um then if it goes into stage three we was told you have 72 hours to save baby and mum um and I started to develop swelling on the Sunday in my feet. My feet were really swollen. Obviously it was summer, I was pregnant, you know, not anything that you'd ma massively worry about. Um, but when I went to my Monday routine scan to see how baby was doing, I said to them, God, my feet are really swollen, is that normal? And when they took my blood pressure, my blood pressure was so high I wasn't allowed to go home. Um, and effectively what had happened is my placenta had gone into stage three and it was life or death for both of us. Um, so I was admitted to a London hospital and I was having routine checks. I was just on a normal ward um, with other, I don't know if it, it wasn't a labour ward, but it was all pregnant women. So a maternity ward, I guess, that probably be the word for it. Um, and so Monday night I stayed in Tuesday night I stayed in um, and they thought they was gonna send me home Wednesday morning, but then when they changed shifts on the Tuesday night, they took me up to a labor ward and I'd sent Danny home. Obviously they'd said I was going home tomorrow, so there was no point both of us sleeping in the hospital. Um, so I went up to the labor ward and there was, well, it was, it was a labor room ready for a woman going into labor. There was, you know, incubator and everything else. and. I remember saying to the midwife that was in the room, preparing the room, am I having a baby tonight? And she said, oh, was, no one spoke to you. And then I was told to get comfortable and seven different consultants came into my room. Three were for my son and four were for me. And what they basically said was that I was 
suffering with really low blood platelets um, and they needed to induce me, they needed to get the baby out. So at this point, our son was measuring small, a lot smaller than his age. And what that meant is that the survival rate wasn't great, but it had been done before. They had everything in place. They had a plan of action for him and we just had to hope and pray. So I was induced. You have five rounds of inju in inju induction. In they induce you with five tablets, um, and they go up, and that's obviously quite uncomfortable. Um, and then they do a check to see if your cervix is opening, and mine wasn't. So then they have to wait twelve hours. So this is now Wednesday afternoon, I think something like that all the days are such a blur um and yeah nothing was happening i hadn't really slept properly since i've been in hospital i was feeling really unwell um i was on a lot of medication i was having my bloods taken every eight hours i was having to have my urine checked every time i went to the toilet i was having my blood pressure taken every hour um i mean the hospital were amazing there was literally they couldn't do more to keep me and baby safe. So they then started the second um, round of inducing me and again, the same process. And my cervix was only, I think two or three centimeters. And now because the baby was so small, they only wanted me to get to four centimeters. So yeah, I was only two, I think at that point. Um, and nothing was really happening. So because of my platelets and my blood pressure, they didn't want to have to give me a cesarean because I would have potentially bled out on the table or if I'd survived, then I would have, they, my womb would have been so damaged and the baby would definitely wouldn't have survived. So cesarean was literally like, I'm definitely not having a baby and I won't be able to have babies in the future. Um, but my blood platelets came back up. So I suffer with something called help. Um, and my platelets were so low, if they'd gone any lower, I would have been in DIC, which is basically where you bleed out from every hole in your face, your, in your body, everywhere. So like you bleed out from your eyes, your ears, everything can effectively, your organs are shutting down. But miraculously, my platelets started to go back up and that meant that they was able to push this area and one back. And they said, if, if the contractions don't start, then we've got the rod method. Um, which thankfully I didn't find out what that was. Um, but yeah, so my contraction started and then they do a scan to see what's going on. And when they did the scan, they said the baby was breached, which because our baby was so small, that wasn't really a problem. Um, but then they said that they couldn't find a heartbeat, which was terrifying. Um, I just always thought that, you know, his heartbeat was so strong the whole time he was in the hospital. Bearing in mind, I was so ill. And I just didn't think if you got contractions that your baby, you wouldn't get a baby. I just didn't, I just didn't put that together. I mean, I remember looking at my mum and being like, that doesn't make sense. And then the second consultant comes in to confirm it. And she was the consultant who had been see him regularly for the fluid on the brain and you know they said I'm so sorry um but obviously the baby has to come out so I then knew I was having a stillbirth um and shortly after that my waters broke and everything came away but there was no baby because obviously our son was so tiny and his head with the fluid on the brain was so large he got stuck um so we just had to wait and I didn't actually give birth until Friday afternoon um, and I needed physical help to give birth. The consultant had to actually like open my cervix manually and I push, she pull kind of situation. Um, and that was it. There was nothing I could do. Then my placenta got stuck. So I then had to wait for that. Um, and I think I was on such a focus of like getting through this to survive that because the only way to get rid of help or preeclampsia or anything in that kind of category 
is to give birth and remove your placenta because the placenta is effectively a dead item inside of you. Um, in theory, the baby wasn't causing the damage, the placenta was. Um, and if my placenta had worked, then our son could have gone full term and there could have been operations he could have had to relieve the fluid on the brain, which is, I think, the hardest part of all of this is the fluid on the brain actually had nothing to do with what happened. He could have survived. You know, I know a lot of people that have had cases where, you know, they give birth and a shunt is fitted, the fluid is drained and that baby is absolutely fine. But we didn't get that opportunity and, you know, we will never know just how disabled he would have been. You know, when he was born, he wasn't even a pound. So there was a lot more complications, you know, a baby with complications being born full term, there's a lot more they can do, but a baby being that small, there's so much stuff they've got to do before they can do the stuff to help the problem. Um, so yeah, I was then sent home on the Saturday um, we wasn't able to see our son until the Monday because the morgue was closed over the weekend. So then we went back up on the Monday and then we met our son and he was the most tiny, beautiful, perfect little boy I've ever seen in my life. And I'm so glad we got that time and I held him and I sung to him. And yeah, I mean, it's not the experience I wanted. It's not the experience that I would want anyone to go through, but having that time was so, so precious. Um, and then we had to pick out what he's gonna wear for his funeral um, and organize all of that side of things. And, you know, it's like I mean, three days postpartum and I'm planning an outfit for my son to wear at his funeral. It was just, I can't even explain it because I just got through it. Like, I'm still obviously grieving. I'm still obviously going through the process. It's actually been two months since our little boy's funeral today. Um, and we're waiting to receive his ashes and work out what to do with them. But the reality of everything I've been through is that I could have died too. Um, and, you know, people were coming into my room on the Wednesday and they were shocked that I was still alive because the medical notes, the science, all of it was looking like there was only one thing that was going to happen here and it didn't and I didn't have to have a cesarean so you know medically I will be able to carry children again in the future hopefully you know we had our um, they call it a debrief so when you've had a stillbirth or you've had complications in your birth they look at what's happened, they look at your placenta, they look at everything. Me and Danny have both had genetic testing to see if there's anything we're carrying that could cause anything and we're absolutely fine. We're absolutely fine, we're both relatively healthy, we're both relatively fit and medically we, we should be able to carry and give birth to a completely healthy baby and that just didn't happen this time and it's such a weird space to be in, you know, I'm 28 and we've got a house, we've got a dog. This was what we wanted. This was our next step. This was the next part of our story. And we did everything we could to make that happen and it hasn't happened. So now we are living in my son's honor. You know, we, we imagine what he would have been like and what he would have liked and we're planning on doing things that he, we think he would want to do, you know. I believe that he would have loved to travel, you know, me and Danny both love going on holiday and I think maybe he would have done that one step further. So hopefully, God willing, next year we're gonna to go to Thailand and we're gonna travel around for a little while, just a little holiday. You know I can't spend too long away from Luna. And I've got tickets for us to go see Coldplay because their music has really been powerful for us during this grieving process but I've actually booked it out in Budapest which is where we went at the beginning of the year and I was actually already pregnant in Budapest and we didn't know so that's going to be really special and then we've got my mum's wedding next year which is going to be amazing and you know I see butterflies every day I've had a tattoo in memory of him we have a memory box with all of his little clothing that he wore whilst he was in you know care with the midwives and He's with me every single day and I'm so grateful that I got to experience life with him in it, even if it was for such a short time. And 
I hope that one day we will have a family and I hope that one day, you know, all of this will, I don't know, you know, it's so hard. Like I wanted to make this video because I didn't want to just come back to YouTube and start doing skincare and makeup and everything else that I love. But I felt like I needed to share my story and talk about what's been happening and not just come back and brush it under the carpet. Um, I'm actually due to start a new job soon, so I was entitled to maternity leave and I've taken a little bit of time, but I feel for my own mental health, I'm I'm a better use to the world if I'm out working. So I'm actually going back to full-time work in HR, which I'm so excited about. Um, I'm still gonna be making content. Um, I'm also now, well, I have been for a while, I don't know if I've mentioned it on my channel, a director of a sober book club. Um, so I'll be working with them, which is amazing. And yeah, I'm just trying to take life as it comes. You know, I don't, I don't feel angry. I feel deeply saddened. And I have days where I just sit in my grief and I'm okay with that. You know, no one gets pregnant and expects to go through this. No one gets pregnant and expects to be so ill. But it's happened, I can't change it, I'm still here, you know, and I don't think my son would want me to just sit and cry every day. You know, making content, making YouTube videos is a massive passion of mine, you know, helping other people recover in sobriety and just helping people be the best versions of themselves. And the only way I can do that is by putting myself out there and bear it all. So, um, yeah. You know, I am the luckiest girl alive to have my friends and my family around me and having Luna to come home to. That was, you know, such a relief to see her little face and know that we do have a fur baby and one day we will bring home a baby. But for right now, we're going to make memories for our son and we're just going to take each day as it comes. Oh, God, I feel like I've literally cleared my slate today so if you made it to this video thank you i appreciate you and i'm not sure what my schedule is going to be coming back to youtube but i've got quite a few ideas in the pipeline which i'm really excited to get back and get recording for you so stick around if you're new please subscribe and i love you guys so so much mm -hmm.